everyone, I'm Marianne Mitchell. Welcome to Whole Artist Mastery, which is all about owning your authenticity to make compelling work that's unique to your voice. So today I'm going to be talking about and sharing as part of a series of discussions about why it's so important to see art exhibitions in museums. As I mentioned in another video, Finding Inspiration for Our Art, going to museums is a great way to inform us about what we're trying to do in our work. I have learned so much over the years from looking at the great artists in museums and understanding how they compose, how they make color, color relationships, and how they find meaning in what they're doing. It's very, very educational. It's one of the best ways to gain an artistic education, both in history and in your practice. So today I'm going to be comparing and contrasting the work of Georgia O'Keeffe and Rafik Anadol, two shows that are currently at the Museum of Modern Art and you can see them the summer of 2023. So I'm gonna to bring to you some of the photographs that I took and we'll discuss and compare and contrast along the way. I'm going to start by showing you George O'Keefe and Rafik Anadol, and reading each description that opens the show for you to understand how they're similar and how they're quite different. George O'Keefe started painting in the early part of the 20th century, and most of the drawings and watercolors that are in the exhibit are from that time, like 1911 to 1920 something. Rafik Anadol's installation is 2023 and is using uh, artificial intelligence. So they're using quite different mediums and yet I think you'll see they cross together, they, they come together in their visionary approach to making art. So this is one of or uh, George O'Keeffe's watercolors in the show and this is the opening description. To see takes time, like to have a friend takes time, Georgia O'Keeffe believed. From the beginning of her long career, O'Keeffe made drawings and she made them in series. Using charcoal, graphite, watercolor, and pastel, she developed, repeated, and transformed motifs in works that range from observational to abstract. These series, whether explicitly linked or more loosely connected, executed in rapid succession or unfolding over time, demonstrate the persistent process of an artist who sought to capture not only form, but rhythm. Now we move from Georgia O'Keeffe to Rafik Anadol. So this is a photograph of the installation at MoMA um, and you can see it's larger than life and it, it has it, it sort of feels like it's three-dimensional but in fact this is all AI generated so it's a flat screen and I'm going to read to you the opening description actually on their website parts of it what would a machine dream about after seeing the collection of the Museum of Modern Art? For unsupervised, artist Rafik Anadol uses artificial intelligence to interpret and transform more than 200 years of art at MoMA. Unsupervised is a meditation on technology, creativity, and modern art. Anadol trained a sophisticated machine learning model to interpret the publicly available data of, the, of MoMA's collection. As the model walks through its conception of its vast range of works, it reimagines the history of modern art and dreams about what might have been and what might be to come. AI is often used to classify, process, and generate realistic representations of the world. In contrast, unsupervised is visionary. It explores fantasy, hallucination, and irrationality, cr 
creating an alternate understanding of art making itself. Quote, I am trying to find ways to connect memories with the future, the artist said, and to make the invisible visible. Well, I would contend that Georgia O'Keeffe is doing exactly, was doing exactly the same thing. She was visionary. She was exploring the fantasy of the landscape that she was in. And you will see, for instance, here, this is a series of pieces that are watercolors where she's exploring the forms in um, the Southwest where she was living at the time. And what's interesting is that she starts, this is blue number one, blue number two, blue number three, blue number four. And she starts with a more complicated expression of the forms that were inspirational to her. And as she went along in this particular series, they became more reductive so that by the last one, you can see that the forms that remained are really most likely the ones that resonated, that, that stuck with her as she distilled what was most important and what was most um, engaging for her. This series is her exploration of a sunset in the western part of Texas where she was living and teaching. And so you can see the forms again having different ways of expressing the or, or capturing where the sun is in the sky, the relationship between the ball in the sky and the land, and how she changes in every single one of these, the circular movement in the sun and um, how many circles, how many colors from being rather, um, you know, without having the circle to the circle beginning to emerge to the circle being the circles being much more like uh, a bullseye, you know, very defined and then starting to move away from the definition of a circle and having it become more of a curl that you move out of. And then down here again, more distillation. You know, what's most interesting to her? Is it the circular motion of the form without the circle being the most important element? Here, suddenly it breaks, the, and the, so the top of it opens up out into the background, the white space. So now the white space is pouring into this circular area and the red has taken over and suddenly the curl is really gone. And so here now the yellow has gone and maybe that's, you know, uh, capturing the last part of the sunset because you know how sunsets are. When the sun goes down, the sky eventually gets more muted. And so this may be the, you know, the last vestiges of the sun going down. But she's investigating line, color, shape, value, and texture. She's using those elements to express different feelings, different reactions, different ways of seeing the sunset. At the same time, she was actually doing self-portrait nudes because she found an interesting correlation between the shapes of the body of the figure and the shapes in the sunset in the landscape. So a lot of artists see that correlation between uh, elements, you know, forms in the land, rocks, um, vegetables, um, the sunset, and forms in the human figure. So she was delighting in that discovery, that investigation, that co correlation between the two. Now this is a series of four little watercolors, or actually three watercolors in one drawing, where she's investigating the experience of camping. 
she was camping in Virginia and so she's painting what it was like to be inside the tent and more importantly she was painting what it was like to or what it felt like to be inside the tent um, actually let's see there are four of them this is one of the watercolors and this is the drawing of the tent so um, she's really distilling the form down to an irregular triangle and without knowing that this is a drawing of a tent would you know that it was a tent I, I ask you would you know that this was a tent but I particularly love this one because of the, um, the feeling of nighttime the feeling of the forms coming together in a very graceful kind of way and this one personally I'm less fond of um, but it's it seems to be capturing the uh, textures maybe that she felt being inside you know the the being um, being protected maybe there were blankets in there and this one which has a feeling of the outside light being brighter than the inside light. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, which one of these do you like best and why? And here we are back to the train series. This is a series that she did investigating in the early part of the hours that she, um, when she was living in Western Texas, she loved being up early in the morning and watching the train coming from you know the darkness that was still uh, around it, it before dusk and seeing the train come out of the darkness with this huge um, billowing smoke and the bright light of the in front of the train and so here the smoke is even bigger the steam i guess you would call it and the road here or the tracks are more evident whereas here the night sky feels more evident and then this is the black and white one which is uh, ink i believe and this is really more about the essence of the feeling of being in the nighttime and seeing that glow coming from uh, out of the uh, dark night so here again is this photograph of the Rafik Anandal installation called Unsupervised. And I'm going to play for you just a very short clip of it moving so you get a sense of what, because this is a still. You have to remember that this is constantly moving. And so here you go. I'm going to play this for you. So what you see here is, um, and it's constantly moving throughout the whole um, experience that you're standing there looking at it for a really long time. And what I'm, I'm struck by again is that Rafik Anadol is using artificial intelligence to tie back to what artists were doing 200 years ago and everything in between and using the imagery from all of the collection to bring it into the future to create something that's here and now that is of the future and what might come out of this and again it's a completely different medium than what Georgia O'Keeffe was using she was using uh, you know pencil and watercolor and charcoal um, as implements she was using those implements 
to um, to explore and connect to something to a feeling that was invisible that she made visible and here Refik is doing the same thing he's creating something visible out of the invisible connection between all of the pieces of artwork in the museum. You know, most of us have seen several, if not many, George O'Keeffe big paintings of her flowers and landscape in the Southwest. And so we, we have a sense of what her she was inspired by and why and how she painted from seeing those paintings. But seeing her way of thinking through using charcoal and pastel and watercolor to work through ideas, to work through her feelings about the places that she was living in and the bigness, the, the energy, the newness of a landscape that was completely foreign to her and seeing how she worked through that um, relationship between you know the real world around her how it made her feel and how it came out in her abstract work that was really inspirational for me to see and to see something like Refik Anandol's work seeing how AI can truly perform magic to offer beauty and to offer inspiration about how to use a brand new medium, at least to me and to most people right now. It is on the cutting edge and it is fast becoming something that's a part of every, everybody's life. But this is done in a way that makes you see incredible beauty and just mesmerizing. It, it was a completely mesmerizing experience to watch this installation at the Museum of Modern Art. I hope, I truly hope you have a chance to go see it this summer of 2023. And I hope that you found this informative. You know, if you press that little like button, it helps to spread the word about whole artist mastery to more people and to engage in the conversation. And I would love to hear from you. What did you think about what George O'Keefe was doing? What's your feeling about using AI to create beautiful artwork? in a way that's completely different and based on history, based on the collection of the Museum of Modern Art. That's truly amazing. So I hope you found it amazing as well. So thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.